welcome to Floyd Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Airfix's new 148 scale Gloucester Meteor. Now this is the actual F8 version of this one. Not totally new, been out a while, but to be honest, I'm a little bit late to the party getting on with the kit review of this one. So, very nice box art on the front, absolutely fantastic. You can actually buy these as prints now as well, which are absolutely beautiful. So we've got lovely, showing the markings down there uh, as well. Okay, quick run around the box. We've got a little bit about some of the details down in there. So we've got an engine, uh, nicely detailed wheel wells. We've got the gun base, uh, a removable engine, as you can see just down on there. Okay, there we go. Now your kit number for this one is A09182. Okay, and let put it that way, which is different. Okay, we've got some of the details in the markings there. So we've got uh, Triple One Squadron, uh, which is Essex in 1954, and we've got 85 Squadron from Lincolnshire uh, 1968. Okay, and the aircraft is now at the Jet Age Museum in Gloucester. All right, so usual bit of blurb on the back as well, usually about the Airfix Club and things like that. Do they still do points? Yes, they do. So you've got three flying hours with this. Okay. And just down in there like that. And we can get into the box stand. Usual thing with Airfix, it is this sort of grey, soft plastic that they tend to do. And they still do that horrible thing of one giant bag. To be honest, we haven't actually reviewed an Airfix kit in a few months now. So, we'll have a look through there. Comes all the blurb. Okay. Right. So, we've got a pull a colour call out on there. So down here we've got the instructions. Okay, so we've got a stencil data sheet, which is very nice. Now FX, to be honest, have upgraded their instructions over the last few years, really nice now. So it's got this sort of semi-coloured way of doing it, just to draw your attention to various parts, makes it easier to spot during the construction and everything else like that. So usual thing, we're up here uh, into, I presume that's the wheel well, is it? Sorry, the cockpit down there obviously got the wheel that's going to poke slightly up through the bottom okay going through those side walls look nicely detailed at the bottom part and then putting those all in we've got the gun decks on each side of the cockpit there's that uh, wheel well coming slightly up through the floor the seat some of the details for the seat again we've got the pull handles and everything else like that you've got a question mark down here the reason for that is you can either have it with the actual all the harnesses on or without okay so that is your option down in there installing that down in pretty straightforward dropping it down into the tub control grip going in I said very nice looking cockpit details we got down here instrument panel front bulkhead going put into there then we're working on the guns they look pretty basic to be honest but you're not going to see too much of them and then we've got the actual ammo tubs on there and then the feed lines going through for the ejector ports being put through and then onto the actual uh, area itself so if you're doing wheels up on the lower wing section which is one giant piece you can fit those in now if you've got the drop tanks on you're going to have to open up the tanks but then we've got some of the sub assemblies going through for the structure so we've got sort of the wing spars which also make up the actual engine mounts as well those are being put on and then we're going in with the wheel wells top of the wheel wells going through the underside ones uh, and so forth and so on as you make your way through the build, okay? Then we've got the actual exhaust pipes for the jet pipes going in at the back. They're being fitted onto the engines, okay? So you've got them sort of situated in, got a light going down in there, all right? And then we're fitting in the tub. Again, you've got another side light on there, navigation light on the side, okay? And then installing the tub with a little bit of weight, so you're gonna need uh, 15 grams in there. I'd always go for 20 opening up little aerial holes, which you're gonna to have to do for different versions, obviously, and then fitting that right the way through. These little spars, which are an odd little touch, uh, going in, which are the ones that are gonna sit in here, putting those through. So again, nice little way of showing in a nice graphic exactly how they should be. So they're almost 90 degrees flat across, okay? Uh, underside of the wing being fitted up into the actual uh, fuselage itself, one piece making sure you're taking care of this joint on the back here, getting that as good as possible. Multi-part rudder system, which is a nice touch, so putting all of those parts in. Uh, doesn't look, it may be workable, not sure if that's workable or not. Okay, uh, tailplanes, again, we've got uh, movable or slightly movable, I would say, uh, control surfaces for the tailplanes. Then we've got the actual front intakes for the engines putting those in, again, quite nice. We'll have to see if they're one piece. It looks like they are. So there won't be an ejector pin, so they'll be nice and smooth going in. You're not gonna have like halves have gotta to go together and everything else. So that's a very nice touch on that one. Those being fitted down onto there, and then 
uh, obviously being put through with the control surfaces. We've got the ailerons going down in there. Then we've got this little touch. So nice little one here. You can either have it engines closed, which is fair enough, or as say you can do it with engines open, or even you can have it on a display stand. So you've got three options how you want the engines to look on this one. So there we go. This is uh, Britain's first, if I recall correctly, uh, tactical um, jet aircraft. It saw war, uh, it saw action, if I remember rightly, very, very late in World War II. This is how it shows the age of this particular one. And never really there to make any difference, uh, but the design was all there, and then obviously went on in service like that. So there we go, very early engine. Nice that we get the stand and everything else with that. Again, nice little touch by Airfix. Fitting that engine down in there. Is it the Whittle engine on this one? Okay, and then putting those through, and then you've got the covers over, a little bit of uh, seams, piping, and various things going in over the top. Again, some more little details, which is a nice touch down in the wheel well, so we've got a little bit of piping work. Center uh, bulge tank underneath, okay. Uh, and then we've got the main gear being fitted in. Again, nice little touch is showing how it goes, how it actually lays down the side of the wheels. Again, nice touch. Weight on wheels as well, which is another very welcome uh, deal as well. Same for the other side, no section being going and put on there. Again, if you're gonna be open or closed, building up the nose gear, putting that all important nose onto the front with the wheels. A little bit of a handful doing it that way, because obviously the nose wheel gear has to be in place before you can actually um, paint it and everything, which is a bit of a shame that. I have to mask around all of that one. Speed brakes being fitted. Again, options open or closed all the way through on that. The actual exhaust nozzle itself being put on. Are you going to have the gun bay closed uh, up so you won't see them? There's your choice down there. A little bit of a gun sight being fitted on the front there. We've got the actual drop tanks uh, for the wings being put on. And then we've all got those, obviously, a multitude of vents, lumps, bumps, uh, the ammo chute, ejector ports, things like that, all being put on down there. And then again, a few decisions on the actual canopy, fitting that one in. You're going to have it in the open or closed position, fitted through. Again, nice that we've got the actual uh, anti-missile and framework type thing down in the, the actual canopy itself. Pito tube being fitted, and that's it. Again, very nice. Actually looks to be very good. Okay, a couple of big sheets, which is really nice. Nice and easy to see here. So we've actually got the, uh, this is for all the stencil data being right the way over it. Nice, big, bold, easy to spot all of those being put down on there. So that's a nice touch. Then we've got your colour callouts uh, with the uh, Triple One Squadron uh, down there with a the nice bright yellow tail. Again, colour callouts are obviously in um, uh, humbled paints, but it's pretty easy conversions on those. And then on the other side, 85 Squadron uh, with a metal uh, look as well. Again, really, really very nice on those. Okay, uh, decals. So, looking at, don't look too bad. Airfix decals always tend to be extremely flat. So there's your one for your instrument panel if you're gonna go in through there. The walkway ones are solid. So it's a solid decal, very nicely in register. We had a question about this, came up on the thing. Register just means everything lines up. So you don't get like a half moon of white around the outside and all the rest of it. So they're all perfectly in register. So it's just that way, everything's overlapping perfectly. Okay, right the way through. So that is very nice. Definitely nice, good quality color. It's just that the backing tends to be extremely flat with these. So, horribly done I know, one giant bag with it all slung in, which I really, really don't like. But, let's see what we've got in here. It's a huge thick bag as well. It's, you know, very, very thick. Right, okay, so clear parts we'll have a look at in a moment. Um, I'll tell you what, we'll work it through. We have got some bits loose, that's why I don't like giant bags. Okay, so down on here we have uh, frame E. Uh, which has got lots of bits on. Usual thing with Airfix, it's quite soft plastic. It's it's very strange stuff. It's very akin to a tallery, things like that. It's definitely not Hasegawa or the other type of uh, Eastern manufacturers. Uh, but again, the detail is very good. We have got a little tiny bit of flash here and there, but that tends to be a sign of this particular type of plastic. It never seems to be that brilliant. So if we have a run round down here. So this is what we're talking about. This is a very nice touch. This is the... Uh, nozzles and the the tails and the, for everything for the engine and as you can see they're sort of slip molded in a way so we've got no actual uh, ejector pin marks or anything that's in the inside it's one piece nice and smooth and this one on this side these are the intake ones and as you can see there's no center seam in those so that makes that a really nice straightforward build 
okay, because of that. Otherwise, you'd have had a seam system that you'd have to take care of, like a lot of other kits out there, but being one piece molded like that, that really does help out the builder. So generally looking around, uh, if we start over here, might be able to get all this in. We've got various parts, compressor blades, things like that. These are the panels. We've got nice riveting detail in all of those. We've actually got the speed brakes again, a little bit soft if you like, but not too bad. All the screw gates are very fine, very close together uh, and everything else as they actually join. It's not gonna take much to nip these small parts off here on the side. This is that bit for the front windscreen we were talking about. It's like a demist bar and a little bit of framework, very nicely done. Again, some of these engine parts running across the back, no problem at all. We've got the actual nozzles down there, things like that. These are the exhaust ones. And then working around here, these are the parts for the actual engine uh, to give you some a little bit of detail. And again, they're not too bad at all. Very nicely done. And then on the blind side, very nice to see, we haven't got ejector pin marks, as you can see down here, pretty much on anything that counts, which is a nice touch. Very nicely done down there, very good indeed. And actually it's very much uh, a nice kit, okay? So this is sprue, where's the sprue number? Uh, do, 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 number D. So again, this is your nose wheel up here. Okay, two halves are gonna to go together, not bad detail. The nose gear section, sorry, main gear, these are, uh, this is the nose wheel. Nose wheel section's just down there and all the parts as you run around the side. And again, all of this very nicely detailed, no problems with it at all. Very nice to see we've got weight on wheels. Uh, just two piece, simple job with the hubs. That's how I like to see them. Slight bulge to the doors, which is perfectly fine, all the rest through. The seat we were talking about, so you've got one with molded in harnesses, one plane. So it depends if you want to put a pilot figure in there, you're good to go. That bulkhead, and then we've got the guns, which again are pretty much nothing, but you're not gonna see much down there anyway. Okay, and then some of the other parts, two part seat. Uh, down behind the pilot again some nice details going down there and this is the inside of those gun bays again very nice detail got a little bit of plumbing down there a little bit of riveting work and everything uh, we've got the floor for the cockpit okay the instrument panel itself which is raised details which is absolutely fine so you've got the option to do a decal run or not this is the ammo cans okay for the actual the guns and these are the ejector port chutes uh, for the empties coming out the other side Again, on the blind side, looking around it, we've got no problem with this at all. Uh, very nicely done. Again, the ejector pins aren't on anywhere that we would need them, okay? Um, they do have them, they're obviously on these, but we don't worry about those at all. So that's very nice indeed. Okay, the main bit. So obviously we've got the, the fuselage sections down in here and I'm just looking over it. Again, it's covered in scratches, which is pretty horrible, but the biggest difference I can see here, and hopefully you can see it, this has got stress skin, which is absolutely beautiful. By stress skin, we're talking about the ripple effect. You can see them down on this one, but it's not just there. It's actually on the side of the fuselage section here. Now it's not covered in it, but it's just here and it's on the actual gun base. Again, very nice touch. It's a nice little subtlety that we picked up uh, when we were working on the big typhoon. Again, beautifully engraved, no problem at all. The riveting looks a little bit light, shall we say. Um, and I'll be honest with you, these gun areas, it does tend to look like it's not crisp, but it is down in there. I think some of that is, is this rippling. Uh, the stress skin effect is lovely, but generally, as you can see, very fine details right the way down to the tails there. No problems with that at all. I'm just hoping the camera's going to pick up uh, the actual rippling. Hopefully you can see it different angles as I rotate it. You've got it on these two parts here. The nozzles across the top here, so we've got the actual rudder. Again, that's raised uh, details on the back there. The riveting is all raised, very nice. The nozzles, it's raised riveting on the actual, um, I think that's a tailplane. Is that a plane or anyone? One or the other. Okay, and everything else. So there is lots of details. And we've got this, which is the other part of the tail just down here. Again, that's very sharp, very detailed uh, raised rivets down on the back there. So that really is nice. Internals, obviously there is nothing because let's face it, there is nothing because uh, it's going to be all done. Very nice to see that the actual jet pipe down the back here, as you can see, we don't have any problems uh, with ejector pins in there. They are missing so that's really nice touch on that okay the main wing spar this is the underside 
uh, one as you're looking at it down here. So this is that engine section we had across the top here. Again, nice details on all of that. The other part of the wing spar, we've got the inside of the, the wheel wells running across here, no problem at all. The bulge for that center tank, no problem with that and then we've got the wing tanks obviously down here void of any detail whatsoever apart from a seam line running down the the middle of them which is slightly raised which is a nice touch because it's the weld line as it should be inside of the cockpit walls very nicely detailed lots of detail in these which is really nice to see and then obviously we've got the main part down here which is the belly and again we've got no problem there's no sink marks no damage anywhere no flash particularly on it tiny little bit of flash here and there but very very small again it's difficult to work out if that's a sink mark or it's actually a, a, a stress point I think it's a tiny little sink mark just a little one just up here but generally the rest of it is very much void of any problems which is really nice to see on the inside obviously this is where you'd be opening up your holes there is going to be other versions of this coming along due by its breakdown that's why there's holes all over this because it's a common wing so expect other versions of the meteor uh, in the future but generally really really nice i'm amazed there's no rivet detail on the underside of the wings did it not have it and we have got a sorry seeing it there i don't know if you can catch it in the light we have got a sink mark just there but there's not one on the other side which is weird but we have got one in there all right, but I'm amazed there's no rivet detail under here. Perhaps, I don't know, perhaps they were polished out, which might have been the case. I don't know, I just imagine there would be a lot more riveting. And when you look at the box art, it's covered in it. So I'm thinking perhaps there's a little bit of a shortcut there, because I'm just looking back at the fuselage and this is void of all riveting. Now, now I've got me rosy riveters, I'm quite happy to re-rivet it, but a shame it's not actually on the kit. That's why I hate separate bag. Well, it should be separate bag that stops all of this. So top to the wings. Now this should have riveting, surely, has it not? Perhaps they, you know, some days they used to fill them and then sand them. It could be the case. I am not an expert on this aircraft. But there we go, that's your top of your wings. Again, a little bit softly moulded. We have got lots of sink marks, which unfortunately was the always going to be the Achilles heel with Airfix. You can see it right one there, right one there, okay? Which is because if you look underneath, you've got a thick piece and it's where it cools and it shrinks back. Just see it like filler. Okay, generally all the parts, everything else, very nicely done. Down here we've got some very, very fine uh, raised riveting. You can hear it, okay, very nicely done. And on all the control surfaces have all the raised riveting. And then we've also got the tops of the wheel wells over here. They're very nice indeed. The actual engine covers, the nose section, no problem with anything on this at all. Okay, and we don't have, which is a really nice touch, down under here, we are missing any ejector pins, which is really nice. It looks like Airfix have actually learnt a few lessons now and starting to think about um, the actual tooling. Okay, so we have two types of canopy. Uh, we're assuming we're only going to be using one. There is no centre seam, and to be honest, that's probably one of their best ones. It's a little bit ripply, you're looking at it. This isn't the cleanest uh, and sharpest one that we've ever seen, but definitely it's not too bad at all. This nose one, the actual front windscreen itself, the windshield, is absolutely beautiful. That's crystal clear. These are a little bit lumpy bumpy, and as I say, this one has the fogged in back where this one is the clean one, which is what we'll be using. But again, all the parts beautifully clear, no problem with that whatsoever really really nice so again okay <laughs> again it's one of those things airfix is going up slowly very slowly compared to other companies but they're definitely getting there very nice ideas uh, i love the layout of it it goes together really well the thing that i'm a little bit worried about is the lack of riveting because it's all over the box art but it's not on the kit itself does this mean we need to realistically re-rivet the entire thing if it does it's a bit of a deal breaker the other thing as well it has got some sink marks all over it now let's face it airfix aren't the only ones that do it revel are prone to it as well but they're getting there it is going up the quality of it is looking better but again it's in a giant bag and as we've proven we've got parts here smaller parts again don't throw away your bag always keep hold of the bag because you'll be amazed every now and again down in the corners you'll get a tiny bit of plastic and it turns out it was really important so just be careful with that and again you know it's just one of those things if it's in separate bags you're going to limit the rub and then limit the damage and all the rest of it chucking it in one bag and into a box is a little bit of a pain it's nice that it's in an open-ended box though so you can put your parts in it just be careful though because there's big holes in the bottom so if you've got any small parts they're likely to drop out okay but there we go that is airfix's new 148 scale gloucester meteor f8